Hello, um, so today we're going to be looking at how to put our detailed plan into our essay. I'm also going to go over some things we talked about last week um, and actually what we've been talking about throughout the year, in particular plagiarism and using a translator. Um, I want to keep telling you that these are not things that you can do in GAC, nor can you do it when you're at university. So um, please bear with me. Uh, I have had level uh, three and level two have used translators um, and, um, and plagiarised, um, but hopefully I'm going to ensure that I don't get one thing uh, from level one, not one thing with anything wrong in it, okay? So to start off again, what is plagiarism? It is taking work from someone else and pretending it's your own. It doesn't mean you do it intentionally, so you need to just be very aware of what it means. Basically, it's copying a sentence or a paragraph, so a sentence or a paragraph from an article or website and pasting it in your essay. So copying from here and pasting it over here. Sorry. So that is plagiarism. It also is when you refer to something and you don't actually say where you got that information from. So anytime you refer to an article or a website, you need to make sure that you use quotes or that you paraphrase. Paraphrase meaning that you put it into your own words. Hopefully you will have done that because you would have done a really good research helper. I've given pretty much everyone the same feedback on research helpers is that we don't use full sentences because we want to put these main ideas into your own words. So you can see I'm using the example from last week again, just again to reiterate how I've changed these to my own words. If you're unsure if you've done a good enough job, make sure you put the, bring the article out and have a look and see if your sentence and that sentence is different. Now, it needs to be more different than changing the to then or he to she or any just one word. You need to change the entire structure of the sentence. So you're saying the same thing just in your own words. Another warning, do not use a translator. Do not use it for words. Do not use it for sentences. You should only be using English to English or thesaurus. Using a translator, you will often get the wrong word. Chinese and English are very different. If you use a translator for a sentence, often the sentence will be in the wrong order. And again, the words will be wrong. I can tell, trust me, okay? Many even level two students have thought, oh, Fiona will not see. Fiona does see, okay? So please don't waste your time. You will just get in trouble. So no translator for words or sentences, and please don't use Grammarly. You might think, oh no, my sentence isn't perfect, but that's what I'm here for, and that's part of the reason we're writing essays, is to help develop those skills. So using a translator or using uh, Grammarly, you're basically cheating, and it means that you're not gonna get to learn or improve the way you could, okay? So no translator, uh, and English to English or use a thesaurus. Quickly about your research, the essay requirements. Again, it is research based. It's not about what you think. It must be based on the research you've conducted, which means the information must come from or the evidence must come from your article or your websites. So the five or seven articles or websites that you've gotten. It's not what you think, it's not what your teacher thinks, it's not what mum and dad have told you, it is research based. You cannot use I, my idea or I think. In a research based essay, in an academic essay, we do not use first person. Okay, so referring to I or me or we. Also, do not say this article is about, this essay will discuss. Just tell me exactly what you're going to do, okay? If you say something, you need to prove it. So every statement you make, you need to have evidence with it, okay? So evidence from your research, evidence from your articles and websites. Again, logical order. One paragraph has one main idea. Make sure the sequence of 
the paragraphs make sense, but also the sequence of the information in your paragraph makes sense. So it's in a nice logical order. And include your context and definitions. So this is um, from one of the guys in level two. Uh, this is the example of the detailed plan that I gave you. And as you can see, this person has used their detailed plan to then create their essay. So on the right hand of the screen, you can see a really nice, well-presented essay. And all of that has come from this detailed plan. She's used the plan to get the order correct. So I'm using the example from one of the other essay questions for level one. So you can have a look. And now you have actually completed uh, your class on writing introductions. So I just wanna give you um, a bit of a recap on that and show you how to get from your detailed plan to developing your introduction. So my thesis statement was, while we live in a fast paced society, it's important to consider what we are losing. Food is a part of, of who China is, and fast food could have an impact on its identity. So this is my thesis statement. You can see here that I've put my thesis statement at the bottom. So I've moved here, just copy that straight down here. So that's um, probably the second most important part of my essay. In my um, plan, I actually wrote under introduction, food is very important, different food, different provinces, globalization, and the impact. As we discussed in the introduction, we wanna start with something really, really big, and then we move, move slowly down. So you can imagine that it's an upside down triangle. So we start big and slowly move down to being very specific, and that's where our thesis statement. So the thesis statement is the pointy part of our introduction. So I've started really big because the main idea is I'm talking about food. So food is a big part of everyone's life and not only to keep us healthy. Then I've moved to a little bit smaller. Food is part of culture and identity. It defines countries and brings people together. I've gotten a bit smaller. However, with increased globalization, food has changed a lot. Even smaller, more recently, fast food has become extremely popular in China. So I'm starting to get to my point, starting to link it. And I've said my two main things, which is fast food and China. Even smaller, important to consider why it's popular and whether it has a negative impact on Chinese culture. And then finally, my thesis statement. So I've started big and then mowed my way down. Exactly the same as what you guys wanna be doing. Paragraph one. So for all of your paragraphs, everybody should be doing for paragraph one, should be doing definitions and context or history. So context basically means the things around, uh, which includes the history of a thing, okay? So if you're talking about dolphins, you might wanna be talking about um, the, the history of um, dolphins being used or animals being used as entertainment for sport. Uh, you might want to talk about the history of the sport. So um, if you're in England and you're talking about the most popular game, it could be horrible, boring cricket. Um, but in your paragraph one, you would talk about where cricket started from and how it's developed over time. So this is the process for all of your paragraphs. So having your plan in front of you, so you can see you've got my detailed plan on the right hand side here. The first thing we're going to do is decide on the main idea for my essay. So where I've written my first one is purpose is food in China, history and context. I've written that so I know, okay, I know exactly this whole paragraph needs to focus on that. Now make sure that I'm not going to include things that are not relevant to that one main idea. Next thing, I'm going to choose the order to put my supporting details. I've already written my topic sentence, that's good. This tells the audience or the reader what it's going to be about. And then I've got to look at my supporting detail and decide what I'm going to put first, second, third and fourth. So I've started with the families and communities and the recipes being handed down to one another and the fact that different provinces have different foods and that impacts that identity and culture. Like if you went, Sichuan is quite famous for very hot, a uh, lot of um, spicy, spicy food. 
And then supporting my next supporting detail, I wanted to talk about communist era, so Mao and the increase of community, people eating outside, um, and then what happened afterwards, so 1940s and increase of globalisation, and that's going to lead to my linking sentence. So I've looked at kind of the past and then recent history, current history, so you see how it's in a nice logical, chronological order. And then I'm going to have a linking sentence. A linking sentence comes at the end of your paragraph and it does exactly that. It links that paragraph to the next paragraph. So it's like a little bridge that you're gonna walk across to the next main idea. So for instance, I might say fast food introduced into China, but it has had a change on Chinese lifestyle. So that's gonna, now I know, oh, okay, so now we're gonna talk about fast food on the Chinese lifestyle. So I've already got a hint this is gonna link and it just makes the essay run nice and smoothly. So the same process for paragraph two. So paragraph two, I'm gonna talk about my main point, so main point one. So it's the same process as you saw here, where you decide on the main idea, you choose the order, put the information into sentences and then have a linking sentence. So I've actually been very nice to you and giving you a hint for each of your types of essays. So the first one is, what is the purpose of the paragraph? For instance, if you're talking about dolphins, you might want to have the first one is dolphins in the wild and explain the lifestyle of a dolphin in the wild. On the other hand, if you're talking about sport, this is where you explain what you do in the sport. So a basketball, uh, playing basketball, you have to have a basketball court, you've got to have two hoops, there's got to be 13 players, I don't however many players, there needs to be two different groups, there needs to be a basketball, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so this is the purpose of your essay, or purpose of your paragraph. Then you're going to decide on the order of your supporting detail. So the order of your supporting detail. Then you're going to put all of the details into sentences to create the paragraph. And then finally include your linking sentence. So for instance, however, not all dolphins live in the wild. It means, oh, we're going to talk about where else dolphins live. Or, why is this sport so popular in China? Oh, so the next paragraph must be about why is ping pong important in China or popular? Again, so paragraph three, main point two, same process. What is the purpose of your paragraph? Decide what you're going to be talking about. Make sure all the supporting detail relates to that. Decide on the order of the supporting detail and then put all the details into sentences to create your paragraph. Now, some of you might be going, <gasps> can I only have three paragraphs? No, you may have four paragraphs, okay? So if you're doing dolphins in captivity, you might then want to analyse at the end um, whether dolphins living in captivity is better or worse. So it's absolutely fine if you have a fourth paragraph. If you only have three paragraphs, that is still fine, so long as you're getting the correct word count. Conclusions. So you're going to have a class about this on Wednesday. So I'm not going to explain the conclusions just yet. I want you to really focus on the body. We've already had introductions, so you should be good with that. Then you're going to do the body for me. Um, and then you'll have your conclusions class coming up. So once you've done your conclusions class, my expectation is that after the video that you sit and you actually write your conclusion, okay? Editing and proofreading. So next week on Monday, you're going to have an editing and proofreading lesson. This is going to talk about reading through, what to look out for, what to pick up, spelling, grammar, structure, all of these really important things. Do not hand your essay in until you have watched this class. You need to watch the introductions, conclusions and editing and proofreading classes before you hand your essay in. Because all of these classes take you through the process of finalising your essay. Do not hand your essay in until you've read through it and edited it properly. As I said, after you've done the editing and proofreading class, I'd like to give you a day or so, so you can sit and go through and read it, give it to a classmate, see if they've got any other suggestions. 
So just a couple of reminders. I know I'm repeating quite a few things, um, but I can't express how important essay writing is. And all of the skills we're learning here, it's going to help you in your business, in your science, just across the board um, for GAC, but also across the board at university and in your life outside. Using these skills are really, really important. So again, breakdown of criteria. So you've already handed in your detailed essay plan. So if you've done a really good essay plan, you could already have gotten five for that. Again, your first draft. If you give me a well-formatted essay with references, with a cover sheet, with a really good introduction conclusion, with a good body, you could still, you could also get a five for your first draft. Research is going to be based on your research helper that you guys have sent me and the reference list. Um, I'll give you another some more details about that in just a moment. Again, if you do a perfectly formatted reference list with five individual academic resources in the correct format, you could again get a five for that. Organisation, if you've structured in the right way, if there's a good balance of um, contact starting and then my next main point and my next main point, you could get a five for that. So we've got these opportunities to get some really good marks. Essay formatting, I will send you the essay format template. So this is an example, you don't have to use this front cover, you can use another one, but you do need a cover page. With all of the correct details, you can see that this is beautifully aligned. The font is really nice. It's the same font throughout. It's all the same colour. Um, and it's got the student name, due date, and really important is the word count. Remember, the word count does not include your references. So I know we talked about this previously, but just again, this is the format for your references. So you can see if you do have the name of the author, you put that at first. So the surname, then the initial, the date, so the year of publication, the title in italics. So italics means it's slanting and then where you got it from. Online, all of your sources will be online. You need to write available from, provide the website and then access 24 July 2011. Just so you know, I will click on a few of your references to double check that they are correct. So if you think you're going to be a bit sneaky and pretend that you've got five references, but where you've only got two, um, I will be checking them. So be very careful. Do the right thing the first time. You don't have to do anything the second. Minimum five references from five different sources. So you can't use BBC, 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 BBC. You need five separate sources. Use correct format. And as I said, references will be checked. Here is an example of a reference document. So this comes at the very end of your essay. It needs to be on a separate page. It needs to use the correct format for each of the references and there needs to be a space in between as well. So you can see that there's a space here. So this is an example of a perfect reference document. Okay. Um, so due dates, the first essay draft is due on June the 23rd and the second will be July the 2nd. So June the 23rd. If you get it done earlier, after you've seen the editing and proofreading and you've done your editing and proofreading. If you do want to hand it in earlier, that's absolutely fine. Um, I will do my best to give you some feedback on those, okay? As I said, penalties. So if you're one day late, you're going to lose one mark. If you're two days late, you'll lose two more marks. So if it's two late days late, you're actually losing three marks in total. If it's over two days late, you will lose 10 marks from your assignment, okay? So there's no excuse. Please keep in touch with me if you're having difficulties, if you don't understand what you need to do. I've given you more than enough time to write these essays, to research the essay, and you know that I'm always here if you've got any questions at all, okay? Um, so there's no excuse for essays being handed in late. Please communicate with me if you don't understand, if you're stressed, or if you need any help at all, that's what I'm here for. Thank you very much for your time today. Um, so off you go, you can start writing your first draft. I will see you in the next class.